On this episode of the Carolina Sports Guy, we're going to be talking about the 1981 Clemson Tigers. Yes, a magical Clemson Tiger team that won their first ever national championship. Before we get into today's video, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so, folks. It doesn't cost anything. Make sure you pound that like button. Hit the bell notification to be notified of future content like today's video, future videos on the Carolina Panthers, Carolina Hurricanes, Charlotte Hornets, and other major college sports in the Carolinas. And leave me some comments. Let me know what you think of today's video. All right, folks, I kind of wanted to look back because I've kind of covered every Carolina, North Carolina, South Carolina, almost all. I haven't done one on Coastal Carolina yet, but I've kind of done some type of sports video on every major college that plays in the FBS um, football and uh, in, in major college basketball in the Carolinas. And I kind of wanted to look back and say, you know what? Clemson dominant in recruiting right now. Uh, Dabo Swing has got Clemson winning, and they're always in the top five. Got a couple championships, one with Deshaun Watson, and then you had one with Trevor Lawrence. And, you know, they played really close and, and almost had some other championships. But really, a lot of things go back and start kind of revolves around the 1981 season. Uh, Clemson entered that year, and they weren't ranked. Uh, they finished the season 12-0 that year, 6-0 in ACC. Remember, this was a point in time in the ACC. South Carolina had been out of the league for about 10 years. Uh, they had seven teams. Georgia Tech hasn't joined the league yet. Uh, so you're in a situation where you're going to play six league games. Now, September 5th, they have a home game. They're playing Wofford. Small school, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Clemson has no problem manhandling Wofford. They win 45 to 10. I think Wofford scored late. Uh, for the most part, they didn't get a shutout, but they kind of more or less flexed their muscles and won, and won this first game. The very next week, September 12th, they go to Tulane. Now, Tulane, remember, if you go back, folks, this is 81. If you were to go back about 25 years, more, maybe 30 years, Tulane was a, a Southeastern Conference team. But by this time, Tulane's not in a major conference, not in football. And you kind of have to look at things. Uh, they don't really have a great football program at this time. But Clemson goes to Tulane, and they struggle. Game kind of starts out where Clemson takes a – they get a field goal and I believe a, a botched punt in the end zone by Clemson, and Tulane takes a 5 nothing lead. Well, Clemson ends up getting a touchdown. I can't remember if they got two field goals or if they got two touchdowns and they missed an extra point. But they ended up winning that game 13-5. to So it's not really going to press the pollsters yet. Uh, but at the same time, it does show that Clemson, hey, 10 points the first week they gave up. Five points a second when they were down five nothing, they held on and shut down. Then they're going to go to this third week, September 19th. And they're playing at home, but they're playing number four, Georgia, the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, by now, Clemson has definitely moved up with these first two wins. They are number 18, so they have moved in the polls. But Georgia's number four. So a lot of people didn't think Clemson would stay in the poll long because they thought Georgia was going to take them out to the woodshed and whip their ass. On the other hand, Clemson goes this home game against Georgia, and they beat the Bulldogs 13-3. Now, that's a solid message because at this point in time, the SEC was the dominant football conference. It wasn't the ACC. So for Clemson to win this game 13-3 like they did, it's going to send a message, and they're going to climb in the pole. A couple weeks go by. October 3rd, they're playing at Kentucky. Now, of course, Kentucky's an SEC school, but not an SEC football school. Same time, though, it's on the road. Clemson beats Kentucky 21-3. They had jumped up already to number 14. Now, looking at their first four games, remember, they gave up 10 points to Wofford. Wofford had a late touchdown. So, other than that late touchdown, it only gave them up a field goal. They give up a field goal in the safety to Tulane. Can't blame the safety on the defense, folks. They get up. Give up three points to Georgia, which was super impressive. Then they go on the road at Kentucky and give up three points again. Very, very impressive. Now, the next week, they moved up in the top ten to number nine, and they're going to play Virginia at home. And the defense does it again. They get their one shutout of the year, and they beat Virginia 27 to nothing. So 
things are starting to look really, really solid and good for the Clemson Tigers as they're moving up these poles. Very next week, because of this shutout and the way their defense looks, Clemson's number six in the country. They're going to play uh, at Duke. And, you know, Duke's got a young Ben Bennett, a young Steve Spurrier. Uh, got a little bit of talent. It's not really a football school, especially at this time. Clemson's going to beat them 38-10. to 10. So, yeah, they do give up a touchdown again, but 38-10. to 10. They win this game handily. They're moving up into polls. Now, the very next week is a very big week because the very next week, North Carolina is number three in the polls. Clemson's number four in the polls. Clemson's playing at home against NC State. They win that game 17-7. to 7. Very, very impressive. They're not giving up many points, folks. We're starting to round the bend now because at this point in time, they're seven and up. Clemson's looking strong, number four in the country. But North Carolina being number three, and a lot of people thought with the dominant team to win the ACC, North Carolina ends up losing to South Carolina, 31-13 behind George Rogers. Upset, uh, losing that game at home to South Carolina. So, North Carolina is going to stumble in the polls a little bit. Very next week, Halloween day, uh, they're going to travel. and no, They're not going to travel. They're going to stay home. They're going to play Wake Forest. And this is one game people thought, man, Clemson's moved up to number three, took North Carolina's place, but they gave up 24 points to Wake. But look, folks, that's an aberration. They might have given up, given up 24 to Wake. Wake scored in this game late. But the thing is, Clemson scores 82 points. They jumped on Wake early and beat the dog shit out of them. And they win that game 82-24. to 24. So you got to remember, scoring so many points, kind of putting reserves in at the end of the game. Wake does score late, but the writing's already on the wall. This game's really over by halftime. So they beat Wake 82-24. Next week, it set up a very, very strong game. And if North Carolina wouldn't have lost to South Carolina, you would have probably been talking about number two playing number three. But since Carolina lost, they had dropped in the polls. Now, North Carolina's number nine because they fell all the way from three to nine with that loss. And they got that one loss on their resume. And this game is at UNC. It's at Chapel Hill. Clemson's moved up to number two. Uh, this was one of those games where I believe uh, North Carolina had kicked a field goal early. Clemson kicked a field goal uh, North Carolina gives up a uh, – they uh, no, Clemson gave up a safety. But uh, the thing about it was it's – Clemson scores a touchdown. And I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's like a 10-5 to 5 ball game at the half. Carolina scores early in the third. I believe it's 10-8. to 8. No, I'm sorry. It, it is 10-8. to 8. And everybody thinks, man, Carolina's going to make a push. So it's 10-8. to 8 into the third period, Clemson holds on to win this game. They win this game 10-8. to eight. Carolina could not muster anything but two field goals. They did get to safety on a block punt that went out of the end zone, but Clemson gets that almighty one-touchdown score. And this was going to be the hardest defense to play Clemson because they shut Clemson down. But the thing is, Clemson really shut North Carolina down. And other than the Wake Forest game, Clemson hasn't given up more than 10 points in a game. And like I said, Wake Forest, 24 points. They scored 82 in that game. That had a lot to do with it. So November 14th, Clemson's holding strong at number two in the country. They play Maryland at home. They win 21-7. to seven. So they more or less have finished their ACC schedule. And they've won the ACC. All that stands in the way with their berth in the Orange Bowl and playing for a national championship is they get that rivalry game and they got to go to Columbia and play at South Carolina. And George Rogers, he knows they beat North Carolina and beat them more convincingly than Clemson beat North Carolina. But Clemson on this day goes to Columbia and wins 29 to 13 to stay number two in the country. Now, the Orange Bowl berth is given to Clemson. They're number one in the country this time. They got to play number four, Nebraska. And a lot of people favor Nebraska because they are a college football powerhouse. At the time, they were Big Eight Conference. That's called the Big 12 now. But they're going to play Nebraska. And, you know, Nebraska, I believe, took an early lead. Clemson strikes back. Clemson wins this game. I know, I think Nebraska scored a touchdown late. But the whole thing was Clemson beats Nebraska 22-15. to 15. Danny Forge wins 
a national championship for Clemson, and he had a few more good years before he moved out to pasture. Now, some of the great players for the Clemson Tigers on this team, you got Homer Jordan played at quarterback. Never had an NFL career, but was a good quarterback for Clemson's what they needed. Wide receiver Perry Tuttle. He had a couple coffee in the NFL. Now, I thought Dwight Clark, the tight end that played for the 49ers, was on this team. But I was mistaken. I think Dwight Clark had graduated the year before this, or a year or two before this championship team, but he did go to Clemson. Kevin Mack, running back, that played for the Cleveland Browns, who also was in a running back tandem with Ernest Bonner from East Carolina for the Cleveland Browns. He was on this team. A freshman defensive tackle. Don't think he played a lot in this season, but he was still on the team, and that was William the Refrigerator Perry. Terry Kennard, a safety that played in the NFL. He was a freshman this time. And a kicker who the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coach used to pick up and just called him Donald the Kicker, Donald Igwe Buikwe, was a freshman kicker, and he was the main kicker for the Clemson Tigers that year. But it was a magical season for Clemson. It set the table up to let the world know the ACC would not just be a basketball conference. It was also a football conference. It opened the door for the likes of Georgia Tech and Florida State to come on board, and then later on Miami and, you know, other schools. And like I said, Clemson since then has won a couple more national championships. So what do you think of the day's video, folks? Give me a big thumbs up. Hit that bell notification so you can be notified of future content like today's video. Please, folks, subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. Leave some comments. I want to see you on another episode. Carolina Sports Guy.